Welcome to Tech Tools for Test Success, preparing for next generation assessments. If you have a Chromebook, desktop computer, or other electronic device, please log in and open the internet at this time. You will benefit more from this video if you can work along with what I am explaining. You may also pause or rewind this video at any time. Today's tutorial will review digital resources available to you on the fourth grade social studies performance-based assessment. When I use the word assessment, think of a test. This is a digital assessment or test, and it might be different from an assessment or test that you're used to taking. It's going to be done on the computer electronically. A lot of the tools and strategies that you use on a normal paper and pencil test are going to be available to you on this digital test. So we're going to learn how to use those. Today, we're learning about the tools available to us on the new Ohio State tests. I strongly urge you to play with the resources and tools available to you on the test today. You don't want to waste time on the test learning how to use these features. That's what the purpose of this tutorial is for. Let's log in to this website, nextgen.nuaka.org. So type this web address in the search bar on your screen. N E X T G E N dot N W O C A dot O R G. This is the website where we will access the practice tests. Once you type that web address in, you should come to a page that looks like this. Click on Ohio Online Field Test Portal. It's located along the left side of your screen. Today, since we are taking the practice test, we are going to log in as a guest. So click Sign In. Now, choose the grade level that you are in. We are all fourth graders, so we're going to select grade four. I click on the drop down arrow and click on four. Then click yes. On this page, you'll see the two social studies tests that you'll be taking this year. You'll be taking the grade four social studies PBA, which stands for performance based assessment and the Grade 4 Social Studies EOI. The first test that you will take is the PBA, and you will take the EOI, or end of year assessment, closer to the end of the school year. Let's click on the PBA. We begin to see some of the settings and resources that are available to us for this test. I encourage you to ask your teacher the settings they think would help you the best on this test. You don't want to be practicing or experimenting with new settings the day of the test. These settings and tools are here to help you, not confuse you. Let's review some of these settings. The first setting is print size. If I click that drop down arrow, it has four different levels. The higher the level, the more zoomed in the print size will be. I'm going to leave that where it is. Next is the masking option. I'm going to click that drop down and click masking on. Masking will allow me to cover part or parts of the question that I don't want to see while I'm taking the test. The next choice I have are the color choices. If I click that drop down, there are several different color choices available to me. Again, your teacher will tell you which color choice to choose for the test. This should help you on the test and not be distracting to you. I'm going to choose black on white. That is black words with a white background. That's the easiest for me. Then I will click select. This page reviews our settings. Let's make sure these are the settings we would like to use. 
print size is good, I want masking on, and I want my color choice to be black on white. Now, throughout this test, you're going to have to scroll. If you're using a Chromebook, to scroll using the trackpad, take two fingers that are next to each other. Start with your pointer finger and the finger next to that. Swipe down. When you swipe down with those two fingers, notice the page goes down. Or you could take two fingers and swipe up, and it goes up. On the day of the test, you're going to have the option to use a mouse. If you don't like swiping on the trackpad, I would make sure that your teacher knows you want to use a mouse the day of the test. So let's scroll down. Click Yes, Start My Test. This is the Test Instructions and Help page. These are the resources we will be examining in this tutorial. I would encourage you as a class to pause the video and read through the different tools and the description of those tools at this time. Now that you've read through the different tools and the description, let's scroll all the way down to the bottom. Click Begin Test Now. Now, let's review the test tools that are available to us. Let's go to this blue toolbar that's located along the top. Click on the question icon in the top right corner. The question icon opens up the help guide. The help guide is a list of tools and those descriptions of each of those tools that you just read through. You can open this throughout the test if you have a question on what something is or how to use something. To make this disappear, let's X out. The next tool or resource I want to show you is the questions drop down. The questions drop down is located on the blue toolbar. If I click this arrow, it shows me all of the questions available to me on this test. This feature allows you to jump from one question to any other question on the test. You will also be able to see if you have marked for review any of the questions so that you know to go back and look at those later. I'll demonstrate to you later in the video how to do this. Even though you have this option, I would encourage you to answer the question that you are on if you understand it before skipping to other questions. For the purpose of this tutorial and to find out how this question drop down box works, let's click on question number four at the bottom. Notice it has taken us to question number four. If I want to go back to question number one, I click the question drop down and I click on number one. It takes me all the way back to question number one. Before you submit your test, click this question drop down to make sure you have no questions that are still marked for review. Also, before you submit your test, Make sure you have answered each question to the best of your ability. Now, let's review the navigation tools. The navigation tools are located right under the question drop-down box. Once I've correctly answered question number one, I may want to go to the next question. I would click the next button. This takes me to question number two. I can then go to question number three by clicking the next button, and if I click it one more time, I go to question number four. To go back to question number three, I click the back button. I can use this back button to go all the way back to question number one. Take a moment and use those next and back buttons. Now, the next icon I want to show you is the save icon. The save icon locks in the answers that you have to this point. Once you're comfortable with an answer, click that Save button. So if I click Save, it will save any answers that I have made or any changes that I have made to the test up until this point. Next is the Pause button. Click on the Pause button. Notice this attention box appears. You can pause the test that you are taking. If you pause for longer than 20 minutes, you will not be able to go back and make changes to questions you've already answered. If you pause for less than 20 minutes, 
you are able to do that. Let's say on the test you don't make any changes for 20 minutes. The test will automatically pause for you and save your answers up until that point. For today's tutorial, I do not want to pause, so I will click No. The final button up here, or icon up here on the navigation tools, is the End Test button. This button will submit the test. Let's click that together. You have clicked End Test. Click Yes to continue to the next page, or No to keep working on your test. If you accidentally hit this, on the test, you want to click no because you are not finished and you do not want to submit the test. The end test button is the button you click to submit or turn in your test. Let's stay along this toolbar up here and go to masking. Masking allows you to cover part or parts of the question. This would be similar to you using your hand, a pencil, or a piece of paper on a traditional paper and pencil test. To activate this feature, I click masking. Notice that the masking icon is highlighted in red. To cover up parts of this question, I click and then I move my mouse over the part I want masked. Then I click again and it forms this box. Now, notice how the masking is highlighted. Anytime I click, it will then create a masking box. So in order to not get frustrated, after you're done masking an area, click masking. That deactivates it. To remove these masking boxes, I simply click on the X and it makes them disappear. The next tool that we have available to us is the notes tool. Click on the notes tool. Notice a notepad appears. Many of you like to write notes or information in the margins or other places on a traditional paper and pencil test. This allows you to do this digitally. You can move the notepad anywhere you like. If you want to take notes about the question here, you can move it over here. If you want to take notes about this diagram, you can move it over here. So I can type my ideas that I have. And if I want these ideas to stay in place, I can click Save and Close. And that way, if I need to go back to my ideas, I simply click Notes. So that's the Notepad feature. The next feature is the Line Reader feature. This would be similar to using your hand, a pencil, or a piece of paper to keep your place while you are reading. Click Line Reader. Notice it highlights part of the question, one line of the question. To scroll down to the next line, you hit the arrow in the bottom right corner of your Chromebook. So if I want to continue to go right or down, I click the down arrow. I can move up as well. To deactivate the line reader, you simply click on line reader. The last two tools that are available to you on this toolbar is the zoom out and zoom in. If I need to more closely look at something, I can zoom in. I can also move the page by using the, the scroll bar along the bottom and along the top. You can also take two fingers and swipe side to side or up and down on the trackpad. Now I can also use my mouse to do this as well. To zoom out, I simply click zoom out until it goes back to the normal feature. Next, we will review options available in the context menu. The context menu is three bars and looks similar to the settings icon for Google. And it's usually right above the question. Let's click that context menu. Notice we have two options right now, tutorial and mark for review. Let's click on tutorial. This will provide you with a tutorial on how to answer the style of question that's being asked. It is not a hint to what the answer is, but is a hint on how to properly answer the question. Notice on the red box there, it gives you written directions, and then on the screen behind, it will show a demonstration on how 
to answer the question. This is a drag and drop question, so it will show the cat or the dog being dragged and dropped into part A or part B. I would encourage you to watch the video tutorials on your own or as a class so that you're familiar with ways to answer the question when you take the actual test. For this tutorial, I'm not going to show you this entire video here. Another option we have in context menu is mark for review. Just because I'm showing you this does not mean you should not answer questions to the best of your ability. In fact, I encourage you to answer the question if you understand it before skipping to other questions. But let's, for this tutorial's sake, pretend we don't understand this question. We want to come back to it later. I would click Mark for Review. Notice it turns down the corner of this box, and up in the questions drop-down, it has marked question number one. That indicates to me that I need to come back and look at this question. This would be similar to circling a question number on a pencil or paper test. Many of you do that so that you know to go back to review that question. To remove this marked for review, I simply click that context menu and click unmark for review. Notice the mark for review disappears from the question drop down. It also makes this box whole again. There's another context menu option that you have. But if I click on this context menu, it's not there. The other option is to highlight. If I highlight the word Ohio, I can then click on context menu and click highlight selection. Notice how it highlights the word Ohio. When I double clicked on a word, you may have noticed these three icons that appeared. That will not appear on your test. That is a program that I use uh, in my class that I am unable to deactivate at this time. Another way that I can highlight is to right click. On the Chromebook, you can right click by simply taking two fingers and tapping on the trackpad. Try that now. That should give you this. You can highlight that selection, or if I right click again, I can remove the highlighting. Now, let's answer this question. Let's see how to answer this question. First thing you should always do is read each question carefully. Eight presidents have called their Ohio, or have called Ohio their home. Move the presidents from Ohio in the correct order to the year they took office. So I need to drag and drop these presidents into the right box. So this is an activity that uses chronological order. So I will look to place this on the timeline. I notice that the Miami and Erie Canal was completed in 1845. I need to find which president took office before 1845. To do that, I will come down here and look at the names and also the dates that are provided. I do not need to know this exact date the president took office because it is provided for me. So this is a drag and drop question. To drag and drop, I click on that president, holding my hand on the trackpad, and then I slide it up over this outline box and I let go. It drops it in there. If you're using a mouse, you take the pointer over top one of the presidents. So left click holding it down and move it to where you think it belongs. Now, once I've placed an answer or two in here, I can move these answers up here as well. I can click and move over to different spots. I can move it back. So again, I'm clicking, holding my finger on the trackpad and with my other finger, moving it up to the box where it goes. Also notice, release the mouse button to place the object where you want it. It gives you directions there. So you hold it down, move your finger, and then release your finger to drop it. If I'm confident that this is my answer, 
I'll click Save to save my work so far. Now I'll move on to the next question. Question number two is a multiple choice question. You need to read the directions carefully. The following question has two parts. First, answer part A, then answer part B. These questions, since they are on the same page, are going to go together. So it's important that you read both questions to find the answer. And it's also important that you answer both questions. Again, if you did not know how to answer this style of question, you would click the question drop down, the context menu over here. Now notice there's another option called strike through. I will show you how to use strike through in a moment. So part A, as different settlers moved into the Ohio country, there were times of conflict and cooperation between the settlers and American Indians. What was one cause of conflict between American Indians and European settlers in the Ohio country? So you're going to use the same test taking strategies that you've used your whole life. Read each answer or possible answer. European settlers did not share farming practices with American Indians. European settlers forced American Indians to move in search of new lands. American Indians supported the Spanish settlers in conflicts against French fur traders over land rights. American Indians did not show European settlers how to use gunpowder to help them hunt in the countryside. Now, we can also, before we even answer Part A, look at Part B. Why did your selection in Part A cause conflict between American Indians and European settlers? So our answer to Part A will help us answer uh, Part B. So let's look at our possible answers for Part A. If I want to eliminate some of my choices, I can do that. This would be like crossing out possible answers on a multiple choice test. To do this, you right click. If you're using a mouse, simply click the button on the right side of the mouse. If you're using a Chromebook and only have the trackpad, take two fingers and tap the trackpad. That's a, that's a right click on the Chromebook. So if I want to eliminate letter A as a possibility, I would click strike through. Again, that's like crossing out the answer. I can do it for letter B as well. I can do it for letter C as well. If I wanted to remove this, I simply hold my mouse over this. I click, I right click and click undo strike through. I then click undo strike through with my right click again. And then I click undo strike through again with another right click. So if I thought the answer was letter A, I would click on letter A. Notice how it highlights letter A. So then I would then answer part B. Why did your selection in part A cause conflict between American Indians and European settlers? So then I would answer part B. I'm just going to choose A again. I don't know if your teacher is taking this for a grade or not, so I'm just choosing letter A, which may or may not be the answer. Again, I'm comfortable with these answers, so then I will save my answer. Then I'll click Next to go on to the next question. This question is an extended response question. I know that because there's a, an area for me to type my answer. So again, we always read the question, all parts of the question. More than 42,000 miles of highway have been built throughout the United States. This construction has had a great impact on the nation and the environment. Describe one positive consequence of interstate highway growth. Then, describe one negative consequence of interstate highway growth. Type your answer in the space provided. Again, this is a two-part question. I have to describe one positive consequence and just so that I remember to do this, I'm going to highlight this. Remember to highlight, you highlight the word, and then I want you on your own to try to remember what to do next. That's right. You can right click 
and click Highlight Selection. I also need to then describe one negative consequence. So I will highlight one negative consequence. How do you highlight this? Well, you can right click or, I'm sorry, you can go to context menu and hit highlight selection as well. So that is jumping off the screen for me to describe one positive and one negative consequence. So I would then think about my answer. Remember, if I wanted to write some notes before I wrote the answer in there, I could write down some more ideas. So I might say, I click in here to start typing. One positive consequence would be, and then whatever that positive consequence would be. So then I would go on and make sure we are describing that consequence as well. Once I have done that, I can use one of my tools so that I know I've done this. I'm going to use my masking tool. I'll highlight the masking tool. I'll click here and cover up the one positive consequence because I know I've done that. Then down here, I would type my one negative consequence. And I would describe that as well. Now, with this being a typed answer, there are several tools available to us to make sure we do as best we can. If I wanted to make a word bold, I can click the bolded B. I can italicize it by clicking the italicized I. I can underline it by clicking the underlined U. So try those. To remove those, you can click on it again, or you can click Remove Formatting. Now, you also have the ability to insert a numbered list. So if I click that, notice how it numbers this. Or I can make this bulleted. To remove those, you simply click on that. Now, since we're writing a paragraph, we probably want to indent. I can do that by clicking the Increase Indent. If I wanted to move it back to decrease the indent, I can do that. Let's say there was words I did not want. If I wanted to eliminate these periods here, I could cut them. If I wanted to undo what I just did, I could click the undo. But I wanted to get rid of them, so I'll click the redo. Actually, let's undo those. That was some practice with undo and redo. If I wanted to copy those, I could click this button. I could copy and then move my cursor here and hit paste to paste those right there. We went over undo and redo. Now is the spell check. When you type in Microsoft Word or Google Docs, it automatically underlines words that are misspelled. Many of you probably noticed in this tutorial when I was typing, I misspelled a word. You may have even raised your hand and told the teacher, well, believe it or not, I did that on purpose so I could show you how to use spell check. Once you've finished typing your entire paragraph or two paragraphs or two sentences, however much you use to answer this question, highlight the entire selection. To highlight the entire selection, you can click at the end and just drag your mouse over it. Now I will click the spell check icon. It does, notice how it did not automatically check the spelling of my words as I was typing. I needed to hit spell check. I have two misspelled words. To get the proper spelling, I can click on it, and then I'll click on that, and notice it changes it for me. I'll click on consequence, and notice it will change it for me. Those are the proper spellings. Now, if I want to continue typing, maybe add some more, I have to deactivate spell check. You may also find the need to insert a special character. 
This has different fractions that you can use, also different symbols that you can do. If you notice the top right of this box, it makes it larger so that you can see what the symbol is. And it also will tell you below how this is the copyright sign. So I will hit cancel. That tool is the tool that will show you how to use special characters. Now once I'm comfortable with this answer, I will hit save. And I'll move on to the next question. The next question is another extended response question. I would go on and answer this question. Remember, it says identify two branches of the United States government, then explain one responsibility of each branch. You need to explain two responsibilities in total, one for the legislative and one for the judicial. And that's a little hint. All right, so then once I finish this test, once I felt comfortable with this answer, I would click Save to lock in my answer. Then I would look up here to see if I have any questions that are marked for review. I do not. But before I hit end test and submit that test, I'm going to go all the way back to question number one and review the question and the answer. And I'll do this for each question on the test. And then once I'm finished, I'll hit end test. When I click end test, that will submit my test for me. I hope this tutorial has helped you to better understand the tools and resources that are available to you on your social studies test. I know you guys are going to do wonderful on this test. So good luck, and remember, do your best.